Hey traders, happy Sunday and welcome back to another one of my Sunday videos. I do these every week to help prep for the week ahead. And my goal is to share with you all of my current ideas, positions, things that I'm looking for going into the week ahead. Now, as we get started, I just wanna ask a favor of you. If you enjoy these videos, they are free and I'll always keep them that way. Uh, but if you could do me a big favor, I do appreciate if you drop a thumbs up button uh, or hit the thumbs up button on this video. It does really just help to support my YouTube channel on the YouTube algorithm. So uh, with that said, let's jump in. Okay, so I wanna start with the dollar index and I do this often in my videos. I use usually talk about the dollar index in just about every single video, just because of how important it has an impact on just about everything else in the financial markets. So I personally primarily trade indices and I also trade gold. Those are, you know, that and oil are the primary things that I trade. I do a little currency pair trading as well, but these are the primary things that I'm focused on. But the dollar holds the key for just about every market that all of us pay attention to. If you trade indices, commodities, FX, whatever you trade, the dollar index is sort of in the middle of all of it because it is the global reserve currency. And last week, we saw some shift in the story. Um, first, let's take a look at price action. So if we just take a very, very simple look of what we are seeing in this chart, we've seen a downtrend persist for some time, and that downtrend seems to maybe have broken into a sideways or uh, upward trend in the last week. And I wanna talk about the data as to why that is, because it will act to support this breakout in my opinion. But from a pure price action standpoint, we've been in a consolidation zone on the daily chart going back until this kind of big sell-off that we saw in late August. So since late August, we've seen pushes to the downside, buyers stepping in, pushes to the upside, rejection from sellers, buyers down here. And then we were wondering going into this NFP week last week, if we were gonna see a repeat function where we just saw a price consolidate further. And the answer was answered loud and clear by the bulls on Friday, which was the no, right? We got a resounding no, we're not going back down. Buyers are back in control. Now, why? Well, if we go into the data and we keep it brief here, I wanna keep a high level overview on this. We can talk about some of the key stuff that happened on Friday. So on Friday, we got the big report that broke us out, which was the NFP report. And I talked about this on my video on Friday, but the main theory here is that, well, look, we were expecting to, uh, we were expected 147,000 jobs to be added to the United States. We saw 254,000 jobs added for the month of September. Basically, a huge beat in jobs data. And that was enough to get the market excited, but we could even go further. If we take a look at unemployment rate, for example, unemployment rate actually came down. And so why does this make the dollar index go up? Well, remember, it all comes down to rate cuts. Cuts happen when we have weakening jobs data and lowering inflation. Why does that happen? Well, rate cuts from the Federal Reserve are a way to stimulate the economy to keep things going strong. But we don't need rate cuts if the labor market is already strong. That is what made the dollar index break out on Friday was, well, you look at this and you say, look, the dollar's been trending lower because it's like, oh, we're going to need so many rate cuts to keep this economy afloat. Well, economy showed some signs of doing just fine, causing a big break to the upside. So bulls had a very impressive week last week. There were other reports like the services PMI numbers, et cetera, that were very good last week. But the, the jobs data on Friday really solidified the breakout. And in my opinion, I made a statement on my Friday video that I think that this breakout is real. I think that there is potential for this thing to potentially pull back along the way, but we may start to see the dollar round out. And perhaps that is the low for the year on the dollar index. We'll see if I'm right about this. But again, my better judgment says dollar index seems to be strong and probably continuing higher. And I'll be looking for some, some contenders for that. Uh, we'll come back to currencies in a moment, but let's take a quick look at gold in reaction to this. Now, surprisingly, and uh, the gold markets, you know, just will to go up is so strong. Surprisingly, gold did not break to the downside off of this dollar strength. Usually, most of the time, a strengthening dollar would put pressure on gold. And it did, but gold is so strong right now because of multiple factors. But one of the big ones is the Middle Eastern 
kind of situation that we see going on, right? There's a lot of uncertainty there. And so investors seem to want to stay invested in gold. Perhaps why we saw on the Friday candle a bit of a wick to the downside, followed by buying pressure that came in shortly after. If we drop down to a lower time frame for a moment, we look at the one hour chart, you can see a big blip down and buyers came and bought that dip very quickly on gold. A four hour chart view shows me everything I need to know. We are consolidating. We can't seem to find a breakout above this level arguably because labor data is showing some confidence, which confidence in the economy is not particularly bullish for gold, because again, it indicates a stronger dollar and confidence in the economy makes people less interested in gold. Remember, failure in the economy, concern about recession, those things can be better for gold than not. And in this case, we have a mixed bag here. I've been talking about this in my videos a lot, but you have what's happening in the Middle East, supporting price, and you have strength in the economic data uh, putting a cap on price. In my personal opinion, gold is a bit, you know, a bit uh, sideways. And I will say, um, we're having some ed edge finder issues this week. We've had uh, something that needs to get repaired, which is this little note here at the top. Services PMI data and scoring is currently malfunctioning. We're currently working to resolve this. So we're working uh, over this weekend to get that fixed. But um, PMI numbers are not quite working. That being said, the reason I mentioned that with regards to gold is that believe it or not, Gold is currently getting a minus three on the scoring here, but I wanna show you something. If services PMI was working correctly, and again, it will be shortly, it's just having an issue this this uh, this morning. If we looked at gold, if services PMI was working correctly, we know that services PMI, this is showing the wrong value. It actually should be showing a minus one because services PMI came in strong. And the way the edge finder calculates gold's impact from strong economic data is a bearish reading. And so what we see here is that this number should actually be minus one. That would technically swing gold into bearish territory. Because remember on the edge finder, a minus five or plus five uh, is a extreme enough reading to give us a bullish or bearish view. So copper is getting a bullish reading because it's getting a plus five. Gold is in a neutral territory, but if this malfunction, once this malfunction gets fixed, believe it or not, we will actually see a bearish view on gold materialize on the edge finder. So how do we trade that going into this week? Uh, just pretend that if it was working, it would say bearish. Again, I hate that it's not working, but we will fix that shortly. Here's the thing. If price breaks to the downside, in my view, if that dollar does continue to push higher, gold may start to put in a little bit of a short-term top. And there may actually be some bearish setups that make sense on gold, which is the first time I've been bearish on gold in quite a while. But again, we need price to prove it. For the bears, they need to see a failure at this level of support before we can start to look for potential short setups. But even then, you're shorting in what has been a dominant uptrend this year. So doing so would be contrarian and uh, would be very, very important to, to take caution with that idea. So something I'm looking at, if I take that trade, I will share it inside of our Discord, which uh, is a nice segue just to mention, of course, if you're not already inside of our Discord channel, I share all of my trade notifications throughout the week. If you'd like to get access to my signals, you can download or, or not download, you can join uh, using the Discord link and uh, the promo code down below in the description to unlock that. So uh, for subscribers, you do get an extra discount if you use the promo code YTVIP. Now down below in the description, there is a link to sign up for the VIP group or to get access to the Edge Finder, uh, which is the tool that I just showed you. If you'd like to get access to the Edge Finder or VIP, both of these have special discounts this week if you use the promo code YTVIP at, check, uh, YTVIP at checkout. You'll get a nice discount and, and uh, on the Discord or the Edge Finder, either one. So again, links are in the description if that is something that you're interested in getting set up with. Again, inside of the group, we share every trade. I trade indices, commodities, Forex, ETFs, stocks, and options. You also unlock access to Frank, who you may see on our live streams periodically. Uh, him and I have been trading together for years. All of his trades are in the group. We also have chat rooms, educational resources, chat, you know, as I mentioned, like we allow members to, of course, chat back and forth about ideas. We have strategy guides, we do coaching webinars, and so much more. There's a ton of value in the VIP room. And of course, if you're more of a software person, you'd like to use our tools, all of that can be accessed in the description below. Speaking of software, I also want to just take a quick look at the commitment of traders data as we go into this week to see what big money has been up to on the edge finder side of things. 
We've got the commitment of traders report and net positioning and weekly filing is what we're going to look at here quickly. So in terms of net positioning, what we see is institutional money is still overall long gold. They're also long silver. The South African Rand is up there, believe it or not. The Dow Jones is very bullish. Platinum, JPY, and Nikkei. Now, when I say bullish, these are long-term positional, uh, you know, kind of weightings that institutional money has reported through the uh, Commitment of Traders report. On top of that, if we take a look at the bearish side, CHF, we have CAD, we have the 10-year treasury, uh, Bitcoin, and we have the US dollar. These are your most bearish assets. So what this means is that when taking a look at all of the long versus short contracts reported in the Commitment of Traders report by institutional money, these are the most bearish, these are the most bullish on a long-term basis. Why do I say long-term? Well, because these don't change very rapidly. These assets have been there for weeks. These assets been, have been here for weeks and months as well. They change very gradually. That's why we built the secondary table. And this is not something you find on the internet very frequently. This is the week-to-week -week filing and showing us buys and sells on the week-to-week -week basis. This is more valuable to traders. This is more valuable if you're like long-term, you know, just want to check in on a, like a, like a long-term investment level. But if you're looking at the week-to-week -week filing, you can see what institutional money bought and sold in the latest filing. So for example, some of the top buys, they bought the Australian dollar, platinum, SPX, NZD, copper, the South African Rand, the pound, the Dow Jones, a little bit of Nikkei. Those are the things that on the latest week, they added, uh, they added a good bit of positioning too. So some bullishness on that front. Now, we can take a look at the bearish side. What did they sell on a week over week basis? They sold the, the, not the Nikkei, US oil. They sold a little bit of Bitcoin, sold a little bit of gold, the Russell, NASDAQ, the Canadian dollar, silver, dollar, 10 year treasuries, JPY, Euro, CHF. So this is what they sold, this is what they bought. And so that can be useful for intraday or short-term swing traders who are looking to keep an eye on what institutional money flows are up to. You can, of course, also keep an eye on this in the Smart Money Indicator page, which might be useful as well. Smart Money Indicator page shows you the net commitment of traders positioning in blue versus the net retail positioning that we get from sentiment websites and aggregate it into a singular chart. If this is something that would be useful to you, you can of course select whatever chart you want on your own time if you're an edge finder user, whether you're looking at the you know, euro or the pound or whatever, you can pull it up here and get an idea of your favorite currency pair, commodity index, et cetera. So check that out if you have not already. Quick look at the put to call while we're on the data side shows that retail traders, um, or I guess not necessarily just retail traders, but in general on the options market, we do see uh, you know, more extreme readings to the upside, potentially uh, signaling that the market is getting overly fearful and extreme readings to the downside indicating that the market is getting overly greedy. How do we know that? Well, the further this chart goes down in the put call ratio, it means that there are way more calls being bought than puts being bought in the market. Now, where are we at? Well, a slight preference towards puts, which would actually signal to you that we're not in an extreme territory right now. But if you get up into these areas or these areas, that may signal that the market is getting too heavy on the put buying or too heavy on the buy uh, on the call buying and those can oftentimes be good contrarian signals to mix into your analysis. I know that I've used them many different times to get a better read on what's happening in the financial market. So, if we go back to the charts while we've just talked about options, we might as well take a look at where the indices left off last week. Uh, and these were some good plays for me last week. I'll actually show you some of my current positioning. Again, I mentioned earlier that inside of the Discord, you get to see all the trades that I'm taking. One thing I will also say, and I say this very frequently, many people on the internet will offer signal services. They'll tell you to buy their signals and watch them trade. And oh my gosh, it's so amazing. Well, the difference that I hope that you can spot as an onlooker of my channel is that I do my best to show you guys real live trades in the market all the time. And that's, you know, if I'm patting myself on the back for a second, it's really not easy to do because sometimes it's not going well. But my goal is when I show you guys stuff, I want you to know that I actually trade, that I actually do this stuff and you're not wasting your time watching my videos. So this past week, I went long the NASDAQ. I, I took a trade on the NASDAQ. Here's the four hour chart. We saw a bit of a pullback. I went long at support and uh, I've got a stop loss below. 
We saw a nice end of the week push on the NASDAQ here uh, after that, that nice little uh, recovery move that we saw on Friday. That was a nice little move. I also um, am long some ETFs like SMH. And yes, these are also shared inside of the group. This is the semiconductor ETF. And uh, if we take a look at positions here, IWF is a um, Russell 1000 growth ETF, so small cap growth. So I've got some different positions. And as I mentioned, all of those are shared in the group. So even my ETF trades. So if I go right here, you can see here is my SMH trade that I took on, uh, on this last week. So. Anyways, um, with that said, the indices, in my view, still look good. With that jobs data coming in better than expected, the economy looks like it's in a place where it's not crashing and we've got rate cuts around the corner, signaling a potential soft landing scenario, which in my view means stocks can continue to trend higher. And stocks do generally trend higher over the long term, uh, but you know you don't want to get caught, you know, chasing them. So that being said, my opinion here is that there is more upside. Otherwise, I wouldn't be long, obviously. Uh, but my theory here is that the Nasdaq, the S and P 500, the Russell, these indices can continue to go higher if we continue to see interest rates coming down overall and growth still holding in there, which. With Friday's NFP report coming in well, uh, very very strong, well above expectations, I think that we have the scenario here still to believe in the soft landing, which tells me dips are opportunities to buy. Now, that does not mean you just gamble your whole life savings on a, a you know a out of the money call expiring tomorrow, or, or you know leverage yourself to the max buying TQQs or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that on a constructive basis, when the market pulls back, I'm looking for opportunities to buy dips with a controlled risk, meaning I'm putting a stop loss on my trades and looking for continuation moves. I think that it's very possible that we do see an extension move up to the previous high for the NASDAQ, a bit of a catch up trade, uh, which leaves, by the way, from where we are currently at, still a move of about 3.3%. So I do think that the NASDAQ has potential to continue its upward march. You know, we've seen this downward trend break to the upside with this big green candle. Saw a bit of a pullback here last week. I took a little bit of a stab at the dip and I've got a stop loss below, which I intend to actually trail tighter. So I'd like to see this thing continue up. And if it doesn't, then I'll get stopped out, take a loss and move on. Uh, but I do think it is worth, um, you know, continuing to take a stab at it. Here's a look at the lower time frames here, the one hour chart, big push towards the end of the week on Friday's numbers. You can see here is where we had um, concerns about what was going on in the Middle East, which caused a big shoot to the downside in markets. And I was in there buying the dip just because typically, not always, but geopolitical scares on the headlines can create some good uh, backdrops for setups. Now, not only that, uh, of course, that's we, we hope that those things resolve peacefully, but just from strictly a market standpoint, Headlines can often cause overreactions, and with the economic data that came out this week, notably services PMI came in very strong, and of course the NFP report on Friday came in very strong. I do think that the you know recovery move uh, was valid, and that we could see more of a push to the upside for NAS, S and P, etc. So couple things that I like there. And uh, I would not be surprised if we start to, you know, head north of the all time high and continue to trend up until we see something come across that uh, that changes that dynamic. You know, again, in a bull market, uh, bull markets are innocent until proven guilty, in my opinion. Um, some traders are going to say the opposite. Bull markets are guilty until proven innocent. They're going to be skeptical of bull markets. And I do think that that's the more natural thing for us as traders or as human beings we look for problems, right? We look for danger threats. That's like our, you know, human, you know, psychology 101. So for me, trying to rewire and just say, look, we're in a bull market. This thing continues until it doesn't. When it doesn't, we change what we're doing. But right now, again, things look pretty good. The economy looks in a decent place. The Fed's looking like they're going to continue to cut rates into a decent economy. That is a bullish backdrop and a tailwind for equities in my personal view. So if we continue on, there is a currency pair that I'd like to look at here today. It was actually the Euro USD. The Euro dollar, um, he had, had a huge slide this past week. Dollar got very, very strong. Of course, on that NFP report, we took a look at the DXY earlier in the video. So with this breakout here, I am actually looking for pullback plays 
to the short side on the euro. And if we go back to our scoring system for a second on the edge finder, again, the SPMI stuff is not currently working, but if we were just to go to major currency pairs, the I could tell you here just from knowing how the system works, this reading for the euro actually should be minus one. And if that was the case, we'd be looking at a minus four. So if we tick down into a minus five this week and we get a continued technical move lower, there could actually be an opportunity in my view to get bearish on the euro. What I'd specifically look for would be either a break retest of this area, confirming the edge finder score at that time, right? Edge finder score is important there. Or we get, you know, this move where we just break through the lows and we continue from there. So I do like both of those setups for continuation. I think we have a pretty clear move of where the euro could go if we see bearish price action persist. Again, this is a huge checkpoint for the sellers, but the question is, can we break that? And if so, then we start looking at areas like this and here and here, right? As possible targets for this move to correct itself and continue lower. I do think that the path of least resistance for the euro is to the downside here off of the recent strength in the US dollar. And you can carry that over to other currency pairs. If we take a look at the pound, we look at the Kiwi, uh, but currently on the edge finders top setup scores, the only strong readings that we potentially have on the radar would be the Euro. So we'll keep an eye on that going into the week ahead. Uh, continuing on, I wanna take a look at oil here for a second. So if we take a look at oil, oil actually had a big break to the upside. And uh, I'd like to go see, let's go over here and let's do uh, commodities for a second. So we take a look at oil. Oil, again, another malfunction on the services PMI. This actually came in stronger than expected and will update uh, to plus one. So when we get a plus one, that will upgrade the score by plus two. So oil t should, if this thing was uh, you know, acting correctly this week, I do apologize for that inconvenience. To those of you who are users, we are working on it. Um, plus five would be the score, which would put us in bullish territory. So oil on a pullback this week actually looks interesting to me. And we're seeing this, we're seeing this across many different charts, this sort of style where we're getting trend line breaks, we're getting breakouts to the upside. So if I get my fibs out here and I look at oil, I'm actually interested in potentially looking at a 38.2% pullback in the US oil chart. Now, how will I play this? Well, I might play some stocks in the world of uh, of, of uh, you know, options. I actually sold puts on ExxonMobil last month and made some good money on that. I may do that again uh, with a willingness to buy that stock, or I may just trade US oil uh, ETFs, USO, for example, basically the same chart as this. So I'm looking to potentially get long on oil if we get a pullback. I do like it. I think that you have geopolitical side, but you also have, again, stronger than anticipated jobs, services, PMI data. Um, you know, labor market data was good last week, and that is a supportive thing to oil prices. Remember, strong economies demand more oil. And that brings me to another component to the strong economy story. It's not just the U.S. economy that demands oil. It's also China. China has been absolutely beast mode. Uh, it's like uh, the dragon has woken up, right? The absolute beast mode that is this chart is the Chinese stock market. And depending on which you know chart you want to pull up, here's China large cap ETF FXI. Here's the Internet, uh, you know, K-Web, which is the China internet ETF. Look at this thing. These things are absolutely going ham right now. They're going crazy. And it is due to the Chinese uh, government and central bank looking to pump stimulus and reduce uh, margin requirements for banks, which is largely bullish for stocks because, again, more liquidity being pumped into the system. As we all know, probably by now, you know, when you saw COVID, for example, a lot of money being printed into the system does act to, you know, give a boost to the economy uh, in the short run. Are there, you know, downside risks? Of course, there always is with everything in economics. It's kind of like whack-a-mole. You hit something over here, something else might come out of place. But that being said, for now, the vibe, for lack of a better word, for Chinese stocks is very positive. There seems to be a lot of upside uh, for now. And although I'm not buying up in these levels, if you get pullbacks, there may be some opportunities that I look out for. That being said, how it impacts oil, it's a positive thing. Stronger economic readings from the U.S., China, and all major economies could signal more demand for oil as economies demand it to grow further. So, a couple things on the radar here for this week. I did mention if you'd like to join the VIP room or get access to the Edge Finder, 
All of that can be found in the description down below. You can also join our uh, free Telegram channel or Discord channel. And the last thing I will say is that if you're looking for a better brokerage, uh, you can use some of the links in the description as well. Uh, if you choose to use, use those links, I do appreciate them. Uh, appreciate you for using them. They are referral links uh, that do support my channel if you choose to use them. Uh, they all have special sign-up perks, by the way. So there's some free game. You can get some free shares, welcome bonuses, all that good stuff with those links in the description if you're looking for a better brokerage. Thanks for watching. Have a great week ahead.